Good morning, everybody. I had to get my trough of water. Okay, today, wait, I'm trying to figure out which way to move so you can see these groovy faces behind me. Um, today is Wednesday, November 4th, and we are embarking on new stuff here. Uh, we will be looking at some of your basket quilts quickly. Again, you knocked my socks off. So here today is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna set forward on doing faces, and actually your assignment is gonna be um, I'm going to give you a shopping list. All right. So let me just ask you to please go grab a paper and a pen or a paper and a pencil so that you know what you need <laughs> to get going on this class. So anyways, okay, what do we have here going on? I have a lot to cover and talk about. And now, of course, I cannot find my notes. Well, that's how it goes. That's kind of how it is today, okay? So, first of all, on Sunday, we revealed uh, the 2021 BOM, and here it is with Wendy Williams, and we quote-unquote sold out almost immediately, which just was amazing. What's so weird, you guys, is that um, because because I'm doing all these Facebook lives now, we really have no, we have no understanding of what is going to be ordered or anything like that. But the good news is this. Now we have two different um, colorways. One is the one that Wendy did, which is art history that we were just looking at. And then the other is something that's plainer. Okay. I'm, I, I'm partial to Wendy's, but anyways, Here's what's going to happen is, thank you, thank you, stars above, we are able to get more kits. And so if you go to the store and you want to be notified when we get them in, go put, see that red at the bottom, email me when back in stock, all right? This does not secure it for you, it just we will let you know. And we were even able to get the bias tape. The only thing that's going to be a little, a little last minute is that the background um, art history by Marcia Dersh is being printed right now, a second round. And so we probably, you'll be getting this block of the month just about when we start up in January. Um, and depending on the mail, maybe even just a little bit after that. But we can get it for you. And I have to tell you, I love everything about this quilt. Okay, the other thing, oh, I was gonna say, I did a guild yesterday. I did Cumberland Valley Guild in Tennessee, and it was a lot of fun. We did um, a morning lecture, and then we did a three-hour workshop called Elements of Surprise. And I will tell you, I mean, I cannot believe the people that are being reached because of the internet these days and what guilds are having to do, be forced to do. So thank you, ladies. You seem like a really nice group of women. And a lot of us had our pearls on. I didn't have my pearls on. And then I went, oh my gosh, I gotta go get my pearls. So it, we just had a lot of fun, all right? And so for those of you that aren't in, that don't know, that is for RBJ on voting day because we get to vote all right so here we go all right um as far as supplies this is what you're gonna need well let's not do that right now let's look at some of your quilts all right you guys are just with these basket quilts you're you're just doing it man okay this i'm leaving also words up here because i got questions and stuff um, plan to piece backing. Well, now I've got too many things I have to look at here. Um, plan to piece by backing with red and white fabrics. Yeah. I mean, this is so much fun. I just cannot believe it. I actually have my backing ready to go and I'll show it to you. I just, it's pieced with two different, um, fabrics. One is, they're from my collections. Okay. One is polka dots, white polka dots, but then really sad this collection never really flew and it was really good and then it has thimbles on the back so that's what my backing is going to be on my basket quilt and it is sewn together and I got to get hold of Diane Schweigert 
Okay, so here's another one. And look how those spacers go in there. The other thing, this is um, Lynn's. Lynn, I like how you put in the solid chunks of fabric and then on the outside border, how you threw some more prints in. So that is really exciting. And I believe too, let's see, this is ready to be quilted. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, this is pie. I call you pie. Um, a table runner. And you said in here that you wish you had a little more orange in it, but it's all sewn together. Guess what? You can still do that. And what I'll do if I have to insert more color is, let's just say it were one of the uh, half score triangles. I would go and I would piece it and then I would finish it, applique around some sort of structure, and then I would just applique right on top. I have done that before with my quilts. If I get it done and I'm going, man, this just is not right and I don't want to take it apart, I applique it on top. And the appliqueing, I exactly match up with the piecing lines. Uh, that's a dirty go-to trick that I do all the time. Okay, then we've got Fairchild. And, and I remember looking at this, all right, and I was concerned about the print. Well, I don't know why I was concerned, because what you've done is beautiful. I love how you have the six inch border around the edge, and then you've inserted, not only do you have squares, but you've kind of uh, mixed it up with um, solid fabrics, with rectangles, with baskets. That is really, really fun. You know, this is, I got to tell you that this is the part I miss not being in person with you guys, but I'm digging so much that you're taking the time to put it up on the forum. So thank you. It's pay off to teacher. Okay. So, uh, this is DJ and I, I want to mention on here that I would say, gosh, maybe 30 years ago, Margaret Gare in our area did a lot of pink and brown quilts. And to me, they look very, very old. Um, there, You can't go wrong with pink and brown. And this is just case and point. So thanks for uh, putting that up. And that's the other thing is when I see things like that, then I remember things, right? Okay, and this one's ready to be uh, quilted also. Look how, um, this is Diane's, look how Diane had, she said she put the border on and I'm going, well, where's the border? Oh, duh, there it is. And it completely floats the whole thing. So congratulations. I think that's a stellar finishing um, way to go. And then, and then the upper left and the bottom right, you have a, just a little surprise square. I like it when you go to a quilt and you have to stop and take a look at it and then go, oh, okay. Let's see, then this is top shelf. Love your name. Okay, this was completely um, a scrap quilt. And she said it with the exception of the crumb catcher and striped binding, um, even the batting was pieced together. So she got to try the new technique and it was the migrating flying geese border. I've never done that. And I'm going to tell you right now, you should be very pleased. That's super fun. And I want to know why you call yourself top shelf. Hey, <laughs> that's hilarious. Love it. Okay. Ms. Jane. Is everything? A lot of people are reminding you it's November now. Oh, it's November. What did I say? Oh, <laughs> I could say it's April. <laughs> That's how time is gone. So yes, it is November. Oh gosh. Okay, Miss Jane. So what I loved on this one, Miss Jane, is well, number one, I love the little create sign up there. But I I love it that you put what your favorite tip was. And that was using the quilter select glue stick to glue the end triangles, you know, together, like say before piecing. And I will tell you something, that is something I completely made up on the fly, completely. But when you post your things, you might, if there's something that was good that you learned, you might want to put that there because maybe somebody else will go, I don't know what she's talking about, and then go figure it out. But I would say with the quilts we've been doing, that was my biggest takeaway also. 
Okay, Clark, this is for your mom. And I love this story because her mom has dementia. Well, I don't love this part of the story. Her mom has dementia and she's making this for her mom. And her mom um, loved brown quilts. And see how she snuck that little orange in and then down on the bottom right hand inner border, three more little hunks of um, the orange. I adore that. Her family was lamenting over the piano key border and um, when she saw I had done it, it made her feel really good. I gotta tell you something. When you are creating, you're creating for you. And uh, when you do it for others, you're not gonna be happy. So whatever makes you happy, run with it. Just don't run with scissors, all right? <laughs> okay, so here we go. I am so thrilled to see this one finished and the takeaway guys is if you're working with blocks in multiple sizes the outside edge has to be consistent and I want to thank you for that JR because I know I was kind of angsting over that myself but I I don't know if it was you I was helping or somebody else but this is absolutely exquisite on point and everybody notice how her quarter square triangles that she is using is set in she's using different fabrics so that just makes it that much more interesting um the different values and prints and all that kind of stuff but look at this too janet now today your teacher's pet because <laughs> she put a label on the back and put my name on it <laughs> teacher's pet <laughs> So please do that. And I actually love that you're using a house because that's kind of the story of 2020. Okay, here's Shelly's. Look how Shelly used those um, half score triangles on the top and the bottom. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. That's kind of her inner border um, on the top and bottom, but nothing on the sides. I wish I had thought of that. All right. Let's see what's next. Okay, so this is Linda's, and she doesn't know um, what should be, you should be doing for the backing. Whoa, sorry, Linda. Um, I piece together my backings, and I would keep it, of course, something that feels good with these fabrics. Like I feel like my my spools feel good with my fabric, but my red prints. Just do something that coordinates with it, or sometimes you can do an utter surprise in the back too. But I know in the olden days, regionally, I would go places and people would like have a heart attack that I was piecing um, my backs together. They hadn't seen it before, but I think now that's more common. And then, um, thank you so much, AM. She shared this a while back and all she had was that center upper right polka dot, black and white polka dot, and I said, please put more in and look at what it does. And the thing is, I will suggest things like this, but maybe you do it and it's a bust, but this is no bust, it works. And in fact, I even to me has um, a feel of Becky Goldsmith from Piece of Cake. So I just love that you guys are sharing our little quilt show, our little, what's it called? Show and tell when you go to a guild. Okay, I wanna talk about faces and I'll tell you about these different faces here behind me, all right? Well, first let me, first let me go. No, let's let's start with this first. Okay, back in the day, Jean Ray Laurie was the very first person I was exposed to in using fiber as art. And it was at the Nut Tree. I was at Chico at that point and we'd always stop there and get a poster. Um, there was always two posters that reflected the art that they had in the gallery. And it was really a big deal when I saw fabric on the wall. And so these are very simple faces, but I love it. It's a listen to your mothers, the universal mother speaks. I just think this is fabulous. And truly Jean Ray, um, it's interesting when I wish she were still alive because she would be somebody we would do a um, special on. Um, Jean was the one of the very first godmothers out there that I think was a feminist. And she also 
she wrote this book and I still have it. And it was about taking yourself seriously as an artist and how to do it. So Jean to me has set the tone for a lot of, of what we are um, enjoying today. Cause I was thinking about that when I was getting this whole thing ready, I'm like going, I'm like going, wait a minute. Um, it wasn't, Yv Yvonne wasn't the first. And then speaking of Yvonne, uh, we, with the magazine, Ricky's in my magazine, every other month we would have an issue that was about something and this was faces. And in this particular issue was an article about, about Yvonne and we had downloads available that you could make your faces. Well, I didn't have the downloads, nor did Ricky. So we each did our own self portrait behind each other's backs. All right. And Ricky did representational and I did fantasy and we are going to be going towards fantasy this round because it's, it's not a slam dunk to be able to be representational. Plus Ricky's got things that are very identifiable about him. He's got his hat, he's got his glasses and he's got, um, his hair face, his face hair, hair face. <laughs> so, so, um, we, uh, here's Yvonne. And oh, she was loved. She she actually started Sakwa, you guys. Um, so she was just an amazing, amazing person. All right, so here is an Avon piece right here. Let's take a look. Now let's look at that face. Um, I wonder if this fantasy person wasn't a baker, because that looks like a cupcake to me for the mouth. Okay, I want you to start thinking outside the box, okay? Let's take a look at this one of Yvonne's with the little crown. And then look at the lips with the little um, flower thing in it. So wonderful. And, and the hearts that are upside down. When you look at these faces, what you're looking at are shapes. Shapes, that's all it is. And then... Here's another one of Yvonne's with the um, calla lily hair. And look at how on her the cheeks, she's got a heart and she's got a star. So these are fantasy. Now let me show you, this is actually a piece that I purchased from Yvonne. And uh, it was framed and had all this stuff on the outside glued on. So this is a piece of mine that I own of Yvonne Porcellas which is in my studio. Now, before, let's see, before we get even going on this, I, oh, wait, this is Jamie Fingles. I'm sorry. Uh, Jamie also does faces and you can see that her faces are very different than how Avon approaches it. And that's the beauty of it. I'm going to teach you how I approach it, but I'd like you to see this is the one I did in uh, Jamie Fingles class right here. Let me turn this this way. And that this is uh, my daughter and myself, all right? And on my daughter, there's a rainbow heart with a tear, okay? And then on mine, I have a B for Bubby because that's who I am in my earrings. But And really the one thing that only makes it representational is the hair. The rest is, you know, whatever. So that was actually at Craft Napa and was a total blast. And I don't know if Jamie's teaching online, but it was yet another way to approach it. So, okay, then let's see. Now let's talk about Freddie Moran, the queen of faces. Okay, so Freddie right now is doing one face a day. And if you watch the Sujata show, you know that she um, just turned 90. And she was in a pretty dark place and she started doing faces and it pulled her out of the place out of that all right so we have kind of as we look at some of her faces we have a unique opportunity for you these pieces are for sale um and so let's just look at some of them through the quiltshow.com all right and i'll talk a little bit about that when we look at them okay so here's a freddie face and this is called, I think, woman with you know red hair or something like that. Uh, look at the background. She has a pieced background or and or 
confused and or that could be her fabric because she has the craziest fabric collection on the face of the earth, but it's total fantasy, all right? And this is a woman with the tangerine hair and this is sold already. Um, but she will like also find, let's look at the eyebrows. You've got on here spider webs for her eyebrows, a spider web cut in half, um, lips that she has secured somewhere. She likes to use the fabric as her jumping off point for images. I choose to work a little bit differently. Okay, um, this one sold, by that I mean look at the hair. Those are like little roses or something like that. And then her eyelashes, cute. Okay, this is called, I, now I, I decided to include the titles, uh, Woman with Purple Flowers <laughs> by Freddie Moran. Uh, this is, now on this one, look how she used just one piece of fabric for the background. But then she's got like her hair, that they're the flowers. And then I love what she did for the fluffy dress. That is just fabulous. Here's Sugar Skull, man with Sugar Skull hat. She names her things like me. And look how careful she is where the mouth is. <laughs> it's just playtime, absolute playtime. And I wanna say that what she does is she composes them. She actually, I think, glue sticks them and then Jean Impey quilts them. And Jean really does a spectacular job. It's a nice partnership they have going on. Um, this one is called Pat. And now this background here is crazy. Look at the women, um, like at eight o'clock and at 11 o'clock. She's not afraid of color and pattern, nor should you be. This is Mercury. Um, she used, looks like daisies for the eyelashes. And that bold, bold print in the back, fabulous. And they range in sizes. Um, this is Blue Eyes. Now this one has sold. Um, I love how the background fabric relates to the hair. But mind you, she did, she's doing these one a day, one a day. And then here is uh, uh, close, the closed eyes lady. Okay. And then this is uh, May Lee. Looks like she has fans for her eyelashes. That's what it looks like to me. Look at where she's signing it too, you guys, right there on the, the neck of the, of the woman. This is, this is Svetlana, Svetlana. Don't, don't miss the bird in her hair. Don't miss that. It looks like this one, she dated it too, which is really smart. Um, this is uh, for women, and this is probably my favorite piece. Um, so I love how she's taken that zigzag fabric and superimposed it on that large print in the background. That's super fabulous. So before I start talking about what we're going to be doing, if you are interested in purchasing any of these, um, I think three have sold. Go to the front page and you can go to shop now and um, grab it today. All right, and then Anna, or Anne, emailed me this just the other day, and I couldn't find it, and thank you for sending it back to me. This, look at this face. She's covering with her hands, all right? I just adore it. She said, she, this is about the size of a printer paper. It's not large. So um, I will tell you that this is the one I've, re I've created for our class, and I'm now quilting it. And what I want you to do is start thinking about things that are precious to you. So like over here, this B is for Bubby up here. And I just had Lev at that point, my grandchild, which is there. And uh, Lev in Hebrew means heart. So those are two components there. We uh, love birds. We have birds in our backyard, not caged, but we feed them. Um, John is very excited that we have bees. And actually there's four birds, one, two, three, four, they're hidden, all right? 
Now, this is what you're going to need to do before Friday, all right? And I would not, and I'm going to give you guys uh, some PDFs that you can download to help you with shapes. You know, you don't have to use them, but like, for instance, here's a bunch of different eyes. You know, here's, um, let's see, some noses, just so that you don't get all hinked up. Like, I can't draw. You don't have to. You just don't have to, all right? And on Friday, we'll get started, but this is, here's your supply list. And this may be the most important thing you do, is this is a piece of foam core board that I got who knows where. I know you can get them at the dollar store, you can get them at um, a Walmart. It, you could also get like a document board or like the science experiment boards that the kids have. But I like this foam core because it's a little bit of thickness. And then I taped on a flannel. All right. And the thing is, is that I am going to build this on here. All right. I'm going to build it. And if I, I don't use till the whole thing is built, I'm going to tell you, this is, I don't know if I just said this, this is the most fun I've had since COVID started. This was unbelievably fun, but it was extremely mindful too. All right. It wasn't just like, oh, I'll do this, this, and this. A lot of thought went into it. Oh, also, this is this necklace I wear all the time. It's a, it's a diamond heart necklace that I have. And then I, my mom had a ruby and heart, a ruby and diamond pin, and I had them put together. So I even have like my mom's and my heart there. So there's a lot of little secrets in this whole thing. Okay. Um, so what we're going to be doing with the, wait, no, wait, 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 hold on. So get yourself foam core board. Make sure it's bigger than 18 by 22. And uh, my friend Robin, I think, got it at Walmart and it was just a little bit bigger. And then get something on top of it because in the end, you're going to iron on top of that thing. Okay, you're going to need fabric. Yay. You're going to play with fabric. It looked like my sewing room exploded. Um, you're going to want uh, Sharpie pens. All right. You're also going to maybe want... Um, um, a friction pen, maybe. You're you are gonna be cutting um, paper, all right. So I don't care that much with my fabric because I feel like you know paper is kind of like fabric; it's just fiber. But you're gonna want some nice little sharp scissors, okay? And just don't freak out if you have to cut through paper or your fusible. I recommend Apple Web Plus. It is a very lightweight fusible that you can layer up okay but if you have other stuff that's fine too i mean it's not like this is going to go on any bed um stuff like my apple stick like steam seam it's heavier and it, it is fine i mean you're making art right here okay then you're going to want um then you're, then you're going to have a choice when we get towards the end on my bubby one i did um blanket stitch around all the shapes all right. On this one, I realized I am not going to do blanket stitch around all the shapes. So if you're good, so I'm going to have, because I'm using Apple web and it kind of sticks, but I guess what I'm saying is you may want some threads to do your blanket stitch with or not, or for quilting. Oh yeah. And then the other thing you really do need is parchment paper or a pressing sheet because when you are playing with uh, fusibles it's it's a dirty sport very dirty in fact you might want to go watch a Laura Wazalowski show on our site because she um, she talks about how dirty it is <laughs> so um, you're, oh yeah you're gonna need a printer paper too just one hunk of printer paper so that is what you're gonna need to get going I would beg of you not to start on this. Uh, just go dig through your fabrics, give give pick out. I'm going to talk about backgrounds and stuff like that on Friday, and give yourself time to reflect on things that are important to you. I want to do another one. I mean, these are so much stinking fun. I can't stand it. Now, the other thing is that I told you what we would be doing for our holiday project. Yay! So I do have those images here. And drum roll. And that's what we'll be doing after we do faces, okay? I figure faces will take us through next week. 
All right, drum roll. Here it is. There you go. So this is actually um, a free pattern at uh, quilterselect.com. And I like the funkiness of the star. We are going to learn how to, and I'll show you the Hanukkah one in a moment. We're going to learn to work with star singles for half square triangles. Um, we'll have, we will have them on the site. If they're not there already, I know Kristen's really busy. We will have those. And the other fabric that, the other thing you might want to get is the white fabric and you need two and a half yards of that. But if you got that, you don't need it, right? And so with, we're going to be fusing the outside edge with Apple stick. And the reason I'm using Apple stick and not Apple web is that you're going to want to be working on a design wall and you're going to want to stick all those components in place. It's raw edge before you do your blanket stitch. So I haven't made this one, but I thought, okay, why couldn't we do Hanukkah? I realize that the star doesn't have the right amount of points, but look at this, you guys. It's fabulous, absolutely fabulous. So we will have um, we will have the icons for those dreidels that you can use and the gold and silver coins. You're gonna need to start digging in your stash for this um, and pull out fabrics. But again, we've got like a week and a half before we get started on it. The other thing, well, let me see, is that I feel like I'm missing something here. No, I don't think so. I think we're good on that. Um, if you want finished applique, that's a whole nother thing, but I'm trying to do this so we can get this thing done before the holidays. Oh, the other thing you could do is let's say you're not, you're not Hanukkah, you're not Christmas. Imagine this as a scrap quilt in spring colors, and then you do simple flowers around the outside edge. That would be a beauty, an absolute beauty. So, um... Somebody is talking here. Let's see. John, do we have any questions? Oh, if using fusible, include that they need to protect the ironing board. Oh, okay. I've done a um, middle school classes and always end up with on the fusible. I was going to say, I always cover my ironing surface with freezer paper. And I do, I do that a lot of the times. Just put freezer paper down and iron it, and then that will help protect... Thank you, thank you. I wouldn't have even thought of that. And so I appreciate that. Um, can you iron on your foam cord? Yes, that's the beauty of it. When you have this on it, oh, what are the sizes of the holiday quilt? I don't know. Um, I don't know, but you know what? It's at quilterselect.com. It's a wall hanging, it's not huge. And if you wanted, you could just do one star and then do some applique on the outside. That quilt is somewhere in this house. <laughs> um, One person said she can do this with the middle school students. What, the faces? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, John, grab me that book of my Joanne's book. The one I'm working on. Yeah. Yeah, you can do this with your middle school. And I will tell you this. I'm having you fuse. Freddie just glue sticks or glues it. So look at even in Joanne's class, and I think I've shown you this before. She had us do Art Girl. It, 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 I think it's been my favorite project in this book, if I can find Art Girl. Where are you, Art Girl? I mean, how fun is that? How fun. And then what she did was she has um, these flower sticks, and then it's, okay, make art every day. Just things, little messages to me patience and persistent so faces have been around forever and um i i wish i wish i looked like that. <laughs> so so we're gonna have a lot of fun with this you are not gonna try and do a portrait of yourself freddie said you will be bitterly disappointed so that's why i'm telling you to make a list of things just little things that are precious to you just precious to you okay and then we will somehow incorporate it let's see joanne sharp yes and also joanne sharp has a new little mini class that's for holiday and i haven't looked at it yet but i think we might be making little christmas cards or something i could be wrong but you could go to her website and her she has just made me it's been wonderful. 
Size of the holiday quilt. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, thank you. Okay, Peggy says it's 47 by 47. Thank you, Peggy. Um, oh, will, uh, will there be new... Okay, you just joined the other day. Will there be new BOM kits before January? Um, from my lips to God's ear. We sold out immediately. Hey, John, let's show them the BOM again. Um, and we are... Kristen, God love you, woman. She is securing more fabric. She is securing more bias because you need black bias. And um, those of you who are coming in a late, you will hopefully get it by the end of um, December. We're, we're doing the very best we can. The two versions. We have two versions. This is, um, this is um, Wendy Williams. And this is the Marsha Durst background. And then we have one that has a planar background. And I have to tell you, this is the one I would probably get. Although, if I got the one with the planar background, I would maybe have to do applique on it. So see, there's another whole consideration. But, and how you get it is you go to the quilt show, put it on your wish list, and then you will be contacted when we get them. You are not buying it, and you will not buy it until you are contacted, all right? So we have so many good things going on and, um, oh yeah, but the other thing is if you don't want to use the kit, if you join for $39 for the entire, and it's a year at TQS, a year, you will get that pattern for free. And it, when it starts January 1st, and that's on top of everything else. Okay, uh, Jean Black, can we use a recycled political sign in place of the foam core board? I don't know how big it is, but I was going to say this. The other thing you could do, you basically it has to be bigger than um, your quilt. And if it's just poster board, it's not going to be thick enough. Um, and if it's got plastic, it might melt. So be careful with that. But the other thing you could do periodically we'll get a box from Amazon that's really big and you could just cut the two sides kind of glue them together and then cover it and that'll be enough to do too so Lisa I don't know why you can't hear me um the pattern will be available for the BOM starting January 1st the pattern for the holiday quilt is already at quilterselect.com under um I forget it's there. So, okay, let's see. Star singles are what you're, oh, this. Star singles are, I think uh, Kristen's getting them on our site today. You will, I would suggest you use these, use these for the holiday quilt. And um, the finished half square triangles, in case you already have some, finish it one and a quarter. Okay. Just look quickly. I don't see Joanne Sharp. Go, go Google Joanne Sharp and or, um, um, go to customer service and send an email to me and I'll send you a direct link for Joanne Sharp. Okay. Can I be, can the kit be shipped to the UK? Yes, it can, but it's going to cost a ton of money. I think John said like, what'd you say, John? Like about 60 or 70 bucks. I don't even know. I shouldn't have even said that. It's going to cost a lot of money. All right. So... I mean, I couldn't believe it. I had to ship a book to Canada and the book was 20 bucks and the shipping was $25. And I wrote the people and said, don't do it. Just don't do it. So, okay. The faces I love. I Do I need to sign up somewhere? No, nope. just show up Friday at 10 o'clock here. It's free. Um, we've been, if you're new here, we've been sewing together since California went on lockdown, which was mid-March. And you guys are keeping me on my toes. And again, I will tell you, this face is the most fun I've had since March. Okay. Oh, John did say $60 the other day. Okay, here's the thing. I don't know for sure. It's whatever the mailing system says. Oh, and as far as the store goes, we're still unpacking. But I think we're going to be starting shipping pretty soon. So, uh, and that's what I want to do because I want to make sure you can get these and you can get the background and you can get apple stick if you need it. Okay, not finding the qu Christmas quilt on um, quilt. It's it's there. It's under. Um, can somebody tell me what it's under? Re it might be under resources. It might go check under resources. Okay, 
Well, Barbara, I'm glad I found you too. So I'm going to go out to the store now, help Suzanne, keep them working. Um, yeah, I think it is under resources and there's a bunch of free patterns there. So anyways, okay, you guys have a good one and I'll see you Friday, November 6th at 10 o'clock Pacific time. Have a great day.